Going all the way down to the corner, Trey Ball gets it off for Yami. Penalty coming up here against Colorado College as Rennick heads off towards the, towards the bench. Huskies extra skater out there as here's a shot and a save made on Joel Molinar by Bassey and the Huskies to the power play for the second time this afternoon. Already one for one on the day. They look to expand on this two to nothing lead. Yeah, already one for one as you mentioned. They had three shots on goal in that opportunity as Gates will make his way to the box. I believe it'll be for a hook. Yes, indeed it will as Gates just got his stick a little too involved on the play. So it'll send the Huskies right back to the power play and percentages would say that they probably wouldn't score on this one, but against Colorado College's penalty kill, wouldn't be surprised if we found a few in the back of the net on the power play tonight for St. Cloud State. Gates off for hooking Colorado College, a chance to get a quick clear and they will. Doesn't go the full length though, thanks to a nice play by Sam Henches to read the clearing attempt and knock it down. So Perbix only has to retreat to his own circles. Nick Perbix back forward to the far side, racing down. This one sent off the end wall. Bank pass all the way around to the near side, trying to work it back into the middle are the Huskies to Mietnan, but that one knocked out and cleared away once again. Rennick will come out to play it. 25 seconds gone on this man advantage for the Huskies. Not only are the Huskies having the advantage via the score sheet or power play percentage, but in the second period, it's Colorado College's worst period by far. 28 to 12, the score opponents outscoring Colorado College. Perbix for Brodzinski in the middle, a shot by Hentges up over the top of the cage. Back for Brodzinski near side, up top Perbix fakes the shot, now gives it off to Mietnin in the far side circle. Now to the left circle for Brodzinski, that one hops up off his stick to the line. Perbix, nice move to get around the defender Crookshank and working it into the corner behind the net. Perbix drops it off Brodzinski. Brodzinski now with pressure coming. CC sends a chance to create a turnover but couldn't capitalize. A shot goes wide by Brodzinski. He'll find the stick of Mietnin and his pass out to the line for Perbix, misses the intended target. We'll go all the way back down to Rennick as Perbix will have to regroup for St. Cloud State. Power play units will change. 40 ticks of the clock to go as Cranola will send it over the far side. Okabe tries to catch up into it. Into the corner with Connor Mayer. Huskies come away with the puck. Fitzgerald trying to get it off for Cranola. Okabe in the corner as well. Now back to the line. Held at the line. Pass over to the near side. Donahue takes a shot. That one off of sticking up and out of play. Ray Christie able to get in front of that one. And 18 seconds left on the man advantage, Drew, that this time for St. Cloud State has not been as prolific as the first opportunity. Yeah, not as prolific as they've had to bring the second unit out. This is their first time on the ice today, Blake. But overall, you look at BD's pass that kind of cleared the puck and allowed Colorado College to get a change. That cha If that change isn't allowed to happen for Colorado College, you would have been talking about penalty killers out there for about a minute and a half of play and it probably able to still change power play units would St. Cloud have been. So it would have been so crucial if BD and Nick Perks would have been able to connect on that pass. 10 seconds to go on the Husky power play. Still trying to get something set up. Pass to the near side for Meyer. Out of his reach and a clear here by the Tigers. And that'll bring us back to five on five. And stepping out of the box is Jack Gates. The Huskies now one for two on the power play and they'll be whistled for an icing right after it concludes as well. So a group of players that typically don't play together five on five for the Huskies will have to stay out on the ice. 15.46 to go in the second period. And this should be a good thing for St. Cloud State as Hammer will take the draw with Cronel on the ice, I'm sure. I know we've kind of been asking for it, but Okabe and Cronel out there without Mietnin as this point. So Hammer's able to take that draw and Colorado College wins that one, but I think going forward, if that's the case, obviously probably won't be, but if that would be the case, St. Cloud State would have a lot better chance of winning more draws. Yeah, we've talked about it the last couple of weeks. Cronulla struggles in the faceoff circle. They still continue one for three on the day today. Will Hammer loses that draw, though, in the defensive zone. Like you mentioned, Drew, that it's allowing CC to get things going. At least a little bit of cycle work below the goal line. Ben Copeland can't handle that one from Gleason. Now it's sent right back in. Copeland can't knock it down. Gleason in the corner, now stepping in to help out. Chase Foley getting it to the line. Shot from the line by Brixt up over the top of the cage. Banks off the glass. Okabe can't get it out. Now hammer a chance off a couple of skates. Tigers hold it in, working in, trying to take a shot. Great stick lift on some back pressure. Two Huskies in behind the defense. It's Will Hammer with it into the offensive zone. Hammer caught up from behind by Brixt. And I don't think Hammer knew that he had another player with him. That was even further ahead of the defense. Back into the offensive zone, fanning on a shot attempt. Another chance here for the Huskies. Long stretch pass. This one connects. This one finds the stick of Kevin Fitzgerald. Trying to turn a pass for 
Cockrell in the middle, that one doesn't connect. Now stepping down to hold at the line. Perbix into the corner for Cockrell. Huskies offense back to work. Cockrell quickly knocked off the puck. Strong play, able to get it back though. Now in the near side corner, Fitzgerald working out of the corner. Trades places with Perbix. Plays it across the far side. Bushy's shot off the end boards. Doesn't threaten the goal. Now Cockrell trying to get it back up for Perbix. Perbix doing a good job to keep it in for the Huskies. Tried to get it to Cockrell in the slot, but that one out of his reach. Perbix almost playing like a forward on this shift as the Tigers are able to poke it out into neutral ice. Perbix again in neutral, gets the red line and sends this one into the near side corner. Couple of ticks under 14 minutes left here in this second period, two to nothing. Huskies on top as they travel right to left across your radio dial. Here's a shot from the line. That one knocked away again. There to hold for the Huskies is Andre Treyball. Gets it in below the goal line, hops over the stick of Micah Miller. On the far side, Luke Jaycock steps down to hold. Miller will find a loose puck along the boards, working against Zach Berzelow out of the corner. Miller cycles down low. This one finds Molinar. Rather, excuse me, that's Nolan Walker behind the net. He circles behind the net. He'll drop it off. Here's Jaycox behind the cage. Tries to wrap it around. Can't tuck it by Bassey. Now on the near side, working with it, taking a shot. And that one tipped out in front by Walker. Initial shot coming from Easton Brodzinski. Tigers will flip this one the length of the ice. Doesn't have enough legs for icing as Trey Ball's got a race back. Winning the race of the puck is Hunter McCown. He'll pin it along the wall. Now Tigers come away with it, pass out in front. McCown a shot, great save, and another great save made by David Rennick. A pair of them off the left pad as he was sprawled out post to post. Another chance here for the Tigers, blocked off, and it's cleared out into neutral ice. And Joe Molinar will clear the zone for St. Cloud State. David Rennick with a phenomenal pair of saves. Now back the other way, another shot blockered away. That time off the stick of Patrick Kazi. Tigers a little bit of jump here now after those couple of great opportunities. Yeah, you talk about Rennick's great play there. That'll silence some haters, I'm sure, Blake. Is. He, he's going to step up when the team needs him to, and that's exactly what he does right there. A couple of great A saves for David Rennick as Trey Ball and Jaycox are still in the ice defensively for the Huskies. Been out there a long time. As Jaycox gets a block, he's going to try and backhand this one out. Now Hammer with a chance. That one almost lucky it didn't skip up and out of play as taking it forward and getting it off to Joe Molinar is Sam Hentges back to the middle looking for Hammer. Has his pocket pick from behind. Huskies able to change defenders behind the play. As Tyler Anderson steps out onto the ice. Below the goal line, a shot off the side of the cage. It's going to ramp up the post and into the glove of David Rennick by Ray Christie. We'll get a whistle and a TV timeout on the ice. 11.52 to go here in period number two. Two to nothing, Huskies. So Lucas Smith will kick it away. It's a low roller and a decent return there for the Lumberjacks as we kick off this second half. They'll start with the ball right around their own 39-yard line. A minute, or excuse me, 11 minutes and 54 seconds left on the clock after the kickoff. And now we'll see how the Lumberjacks offense uh, does in the second half. I mean, like I just mentioned, seven points in the first half on the season. They've put up over 100. So we'll see how they respond here in the second half. Obviously, things didn't go very well and in their favor. I mentioned Brett Therrelton's ball security issues, the interception, couple of fumbles. So we'll see how he responds as well in the second half. And he'll start out of the pistol formation, two running backs in behind him from his own 39. It'll be a quick handoff underneath Faldorf, and he's got room to run right up the middle of the defense. And he's going to be dragged down in the secondary. Ball came out late, but it was already down. Andrew Ambrosier in on the tackle in the secondary, and a nice run there to the 45-yard line. And a big pickup. Yeah, 15 yards on that one. Big pickup on first down, and Bemidji coming out and enforcing their will on the ground, and now coming out again in the pistol. Two receivers right, two left, spread out this time. Faldorf again, the lone man in the backfield, putting a man in motion. The handoff is fake to Faldorf. Now a pitch out to the near sideline. It's Colton Heinrichs. Now he'll make a man miss, shakes a defender, breaks loose into the open field, and he is going to cross the pylon for a touchdown, 45 yards. House call for Colton Heinrichs, and it's 13-0 Bemidji. Just 38 seconds here into this second half. Coach Henches saw something. He was racing up the sideline here on the near side. He saw something he didn't like. He wanted a flag, but nonetheless, two plays and a 45-yard touchdown to cap off the first play of the third quarter, not the start the Sabres wanted. Absolute dagger. And Declusion now will line up for the extra point to try and make this 14 to nothing. 
The snap is good, the hold is good, and the kick is up and good, and it is 14 to nothing, so that's Declusion's 20th extra point, or excuse me, 21st extra point made on 25 attempts now for the season. And just like that, the Lumberjack offense strikes, and uh, well, in what was going to be a difficult game for Sartell to score already, Sam, it's going to be made a bit, bit more difficult here early on in the second half as uh, more snow is starting to fall down here at Chet Anderson Stadium. Yeah, down two scores. That uh, first drive of the third quarter, two plays, 60 yards, 15-yard rush from Faldorf to start things off, then 45 yards from uh, Heinrichs on the end around up the left side. Broke it off for the touchdown. Not the start the Sabres wanted defensively after we just uh, were saying how well their defense is playing. They had a great first half. Now they need to recoup after that touchdown. They'll get the ball back here. Uh, pending any trickery on the uh, kickoff by Bemidji. We did see an onside kick earlier in, uh, in that first half. But now we need to see this offense start clicking with uh, Cole Henches and Ethan Torgerson. Eli Schlecht back to field the kick as well as Dylan Simons, and the kick will come here from Grant Occlusion at about the 40-yard line. Looked like Parker Knutson was maybe the only man left in the secondary that could have drugged down Will, or excuse me, uh, Colton Heinrichs on that long touchdown run. But uh, nice job by Colton Heinrichs putting his man on skates and 45-yard touchdown. He had a touchdown in the last game against Sartell as well. And he's been pretty good on the ground, 20 carries throughout the regular season, 105 yards and three touchdowns, and now 11.22 to go. Declusion will kick off. He'll be kicking right to left. The Sabres will return left to right across your radio dial. Run up to the ball. The right-footed boot is away, and it's going to be a low line drive field at about the 25-yard line. Now cutting back up the middle here, Christian Dicola. He's going to break a couple of tackles, but finally taken down at about the 29-yard line, and that's where the Sabre offense and Cole Hentius will return to the field for the first time here in the second half with 11.15 to go, now trailing by two scores. I think they're going to officially spot that ball right about at the 27. And I'll give it at the 29. You were correct there, Blake. Thanks, Sam. I always appreciate it. <laughs> so we'll go spread here to start off the second half for Sartell and a quick bubble screen thrown out to the near side. Caught made by Brinkerhoff, or excuse me, that was Parker Knutson. A nice gain there on first down. Boucher in on the tackle, on the tackle, excuse me, for the Lumberjacks. Clock winding down here, 10.50 to go. Second and two coming up from the 37 now for Cole Hentges. Now they'll go back to that more wing T formation offensive style here. One receiver to his right. Pressure coming up the middle, and it's a pitch to the near side. Torgrimson trying to bounce it to the outside, and he'll scamper forward. Looks like he'll have enough for the first down, and he will. Gain of about four there on second and two, and a fresh set of downs. Ethan Torgrimson having a nice night so far here tonight up in Bemidji. Yeah, haven't seen the long burst from him just yet, but he's been consistent. Uh, he's got positive yards on pretty much all of his rushes, about four or five yards each time. That's going to help out the Sabres here in the second half. So to, the, their own, to their own 41, excuse me. Hentges will bring the offense back to the line of scrimmage. It looks like it's Gus Gunderson and Austin Hendricks to the far side of the field. Two receivers split out wide. Again, bluffing pressure are the Lumberjacks. And now Hentges will take this one himself up the middle. Pump fake to pass. He'll come forward for about a yard or two. Colton Heinrichs in on the tackle, having a nice night so far tonight. Now second and long, about eight or nine yards to go. Cole Hentges will get that new play call in from the sidelines. He'll take it back to the huddle, and we'll see how they break from the huddle. It'll be spread out. Two receivers left, two right. Again, Torgum's in the lone man in the backfield. When they go spread, they still stay under center. That's where Hentges is. Couple of men up on the line of scrimmage, and pressure came through instantly. Great blitz there by Grant Declusion. A fantastic read there, the snap count, and he came through untouched for the sack. That's his second sack of the season. We've seen Declusion do a lot of the kicking here for Bemidji this season, but he's uh, a threat defensively there. He busted through the offensive line and was able to blow that one up in the backfield. That ball will be moved down to the uh, 35, loss of seven on that sack there by Grant Declusion. So great read there by one of the inside linebackers. And now third and very long. 9.18 to go here in this third quarter. 
Under center, Henches, straight hey. drop back. Pressure comes again, slips the initial tackle. Now rolls out right. He's got Gunderson wide open downfield. Finds him at the 35, and now he drops it. It looked like he had it, but maybe turned his eyes upfield just a bit too quickly. And he let that one fall right through his hands, and that could have been a big play there, but Gus Gunderson couldn't hold on. And we are underway here at St. Cloud Apollo High School. The Eagles coming into this one with a record of 6-2-1. The Tech Tigers 5-1-1. Apollo sitting three points ahead in the table of the Tech Tigers. It's the Tigers on the attack here early on. Working with it here is Muhammad Hussain working it into the box. This one's played back now to the back line. It's Holmes. He'll play it over down to the far side of the pitch. Working with it in that middle third now. A through ball here. This one trying to catch up to it. Looks like it's Hussain right along the goal line, and that one's going to roll out of bounds. And it looks like we will have potentially a corner coming up for the Tech Tigers and an early opportunity here in the first minute. Tigers traveling right to left across your radio dial. Eagles moving left to right. And this corner kick coming here to the right of Calvin Walters. From Corain, it's a right-footed boot into the circle inside the 18. Now a shot from the outside from the corner is going to go up over the top of the goal. And that one didn't have much of a chance, but the Tigers threatening early with that early corner kick. Off the corner kick, good job by the Tigers to find their main man in Ethan Miller. Unfortunately for Miller, he just sent that uh, really wide left of the goal. The goal kick is away from Walters right into the center circle now, and the Eagles will try to get the counter going, and they'll work it up into their attacking third. A nice through ball is going to be a bit too hot, and uh, coming out to swallow that one up is the goalkeeper, Nicholas Lalonde, there for the Tech Tigers. Abdi Shakir Youssef couldn't catch up to that one for the Eagles, and now Lalonde will punt this one here into the center circle. It's Youssef back on it, trying to make a play, dribbling here on the near side. Eagles playing a little bit of uh, possession ball here, but a turnover onto the foot of Ishmael. Now a through ball here. Ethan Miller in behind the defense, but they'll blow that one down offsides. Just a couple of steps too quick for the Tigers' leading goal scorer. You know, it's it's always easy when you get a, a through ball. You're, you want to be the first guy after it, but uh, unfortunately, Ethan Miller for Tech, just a few steps ahead of that last defenseman for Apollo. And it's something we've seen so far quite a bit this season with Ethan Miller, he's had some chances on through balls that he just was a little bit uh, too excited for. And a free kick all the way from the middle third inside the 18 of the Tech Tigers, but their back line will clear it. A nice clear there by Garrett Mueller. Near midfield here, Ethan Miller working for it, but it's the Eagles with it. Yusuf with a right foot touch forward and a little bit of contact here in the middle third on the near side. That'll lead to a free kick for Apollo. right around the 42-yard line on the football field. A free kick inside the 18, high up in the air, going up for a header or a pair of eagles, but the Tigers able to clear that one. Apollo back with possession, some good skills here. Yusuf with it, just on the edge of the arc, and now a shot's going to get blocked along the way. And the lawn will scoot over to his right and find that one right along the goal line, and he'll buy some time and give his defenders a little bit of space. He'll roll this one forward for Mueller. Now a misplay there off his left foot. Able to get it back though. And now the Tigers trying to get the counter going. Looking for another through ball. It's Ethan Miller trying to get in behind the defense. And now an opportunity here. Kadar Karain can't catch up to that. This one just on the edge of the Eagles arc in their own defending zone. And they're able to get it forward and trying to work into the middle third. Pressure being applied there nicely by Ishmael. But now the Eagles on the counter attack, a nice through ball, an opportunity here working inside the 18. And it looks like we could have a man down, potentially a PK if they call it, but I don't think they did. Couldn't quite tell which Eagle that was in behind the defense on the far side of the field. Well, Blake, I mean, it looked like the Tech defender was making a play at the ball. Uh, I don't think that would have necessarily drawn it, but uh, Goal kick from Tech. Right-footed goal kick from Lalonde is batted down inside the center circle, and it's Yusuf on it for the Apollo Eagles. He's been all over the field here so far early on. A nice through ball. He'll find a teammate here on the near side touch line working here, and some nice work there by Nasta Ahmed. And now Ahmed has it taken away. Some good battle there between Ahmed and Mohamed Hussain for the Tech Tigers. 
Ball works its way over to the far side touch line. A couple of bodies go down, and you can see the passion being played with both these two teams here early on. Both teams kind of playing on that edge right now, and we'll see how far these officials will, uh, will let them go. We've seen a couple of bodies hit the ground so far. I think for Apollo, obviously, uh, you know, we talked about it earlier. They're, they've been looking forward to this game all season long, but it's also their last game of the regular season, so obviously you want to come out on top in the last game. You mentioned that it is their final game. The Tigers still with one more after this one. That'll be next Tuesday as the Eagles work it into the attacking third. It's Ahmed Hassan with it. Plays it over here to the near side. Shukri with it, and now the Eagles playing a little bit of possession ball. They work it all the way back to midfield in their back defensive line. Ethan Anderson plays it up now on the far left touch line. And a long shot sent inside the 18, but knocked away. And now the Tigers' back line working on clearing, but a nice steal by Yusuf and a right-footed boot is going to go well wide of the lawn, and we'll have a goal kick coming up here for the Tech Tigers netminder. 